Welcome back to the Malmö Regional Championships. I'm now joined by Barish. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. And um, yeah, we're going to cast another one of those top four games. But before, how did you enjoy that last set? That last set, like after I uh, casted that um, Toe 8 game, which took like forever. Yeah. And then like, just like uh, supporting you guys, casting this game, which was like really offensive. Mm -hmm. And then that dry screen, changing things a little bit up. And first of all, like, oh, that second dry skin giving back the uh, the flash fire. I was like, hmm, why? But then it totally makes sense because he was able to uh, fire off those aqua jets and he wanted to deal, like, deal damage with those. Yes. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then two really quick sets. I feel a little bit sorry for Eric. I mean, you prepared for top eight overnight. Then yep. you come over and, like, Especially that second game was so fast. So, uh, congratulations to Barry, though. Really great job advancing to top four. I'm really excited to see how he's doing against Baz. Yes, that is going to be a hell of a match here, really. Yeah, Baz and Boyd. And then, uh, for now, though, we finally feature an Italian player. Yes. He managed his way to top eight today. Uh, we haven't seen him, but he was able to win his top eight match. Now he's in top four playing Ben Markham. I think that, was his, that, that is Baz, uh, sorry, Ben's first top cut appearance at mm -hmm. a regional yes i think so too um david of course he had a great run at the uh, european international championships yes. uh, so he has a great season this yeah. time i think also in the seniors division before uh he managed to do really well and i okay. think winish uh, like win italian nationals at okay. one point i need to ask him about that again actually I forgot uh, to do that maybe he will advance to finals and we will get an interview and talk yeah. to him after yeah. that uh, but for now it's an open game of course we will go into team preview soon to see what is coming up um, so yeah, uh, let's check this out. I think, <coughs> yeah, I think we're about to go into team preview. Uh, they set up everything, so they just have to connect consoles. Uh, so we see team preview, see both teams. I want to, I don't want to take away too much at, uh, at this moment. So let's see what players decided to bring for this top four game. Yeah, um, we did feature Ben Markham's team on stream yesterday. He's still using Tapu Koko, Tapu Bulu, Porygon 2, Mega Metagross, Araquanid, and Incineroar. And Davide, on the other hand, is using a team that was um, like partly used by um, a Japanese player at the beginning of the format. Mm -hmm. um, a team combination that has been around for a little while. Uh, however, it seems like he's really figured things out, whereas his opponents didn't. Uh, he's using that Manectric. Salastila, Tapufini, Landorus Therian, Gothitelle, and Snorlax. So, do you want to give a little bit of an insight about what this team is all about? Exactly. So, this team uh, featuring Gothitelle is all about control. And then you have your uh, main It um, helps your team to uh, survive attacks through that Intimidate and a potential Snarl. Mm -hmm. And then you help your team with Wall Switch. You bring in the right Pokemon at the right moment. Yes. And then trapping your opponent with that Gothitelle setting up Snorlax in Trick Room, using Heal Pulse to ensure that your Pokemon are not going down too fast. And then, yeah, it's about bringing the right Pokemon at the right point, nailing down your opponent to two Pokemon. He can't switch because taking away the opportunity to switch your Pokemon is one great yes. way to force your opponent to like, uh, have no opportunity to come back into positions where, yes. like a Snorlax, for example, yeah. at plus six, if that is uh, a threat, then ban not being able to switch out any Pokemon probably has to take out knockouts on his side. Exactly. So something that is always important with those type of teams is how many Pokemon does Ben have that can really deal with that Snorlax? We have already seen him go up against um, that Gothitelle and Snorlax combination in the last Swiss round yesterday. Yeah. He was able to overcome what seemed to be a bad matchup today. So it looks like he was already prepared to take on um, some of those teams. Of course, um, Davide's uh, team composition is a little bit different than what, what Nicole was using. But at the same time, it seems like Ben does still have some of the tools that he um, needs to deal with these Pokemon. So, of course, Gothitelle and Manectric, probably the single most common lead within these teams. So, let's see if that is what Davide decides to go with. We are seeing a Tapu Bulu and Mega Metagross, or not Mega yet, but Metagross coming out from Ben. And, yep, there is it indeed the Gothitelle and Manectric lead combination from Davide. So, a strong start off here with that Manectric. He can just uh, wall switch, as I said before, to bring in whatever he wants. He sees what his opponent brought in Tapu Bulu and Metagross. And let's talk about Ben. Uh, his last two rounds in Swiss and the top eight were again that Goffy tell. Yes. So I think he's prepared. He knows how to deal with that. Uh, and mm -hmm. he now has to check, okay, what is uh, Goffy tell bringing with him this time? It is again the Snorlax on the one side and then we have uh, Manectric as well. So I think Ben is, he has a plan. Yes, I think so too. It looks like with that Tabu Bulu already putting on a lot of pressure on both the Manectric and Gothitelle, um, I wouldn't be super surprised if that Manectric just went ahead, 
with that Mega Evolution um, went for like straight a Vault Switch to switch out and um, like help the Gothitelle out a little bit with that Intimidate ability. Of course, for the time okay. being, Metagross still has clear body, so that is not going to um, be a huge factor. But Ben yeah. actually going for the Mega Evolution right away here. I think the potential play here is to double protect this Pokemon to ensure that his opponent goes for that Mega Evolution. Yep, and it looks like so that is what the video is doing. He can Mega Evolve and Intimidate the Metagross. Yeah, really nice play there. Biomanectric just going for um, the double protect here, ensuring that now for the next turn, it looks like that Metagross will be vulnerable to that Intimidate ability. And with how the speed mechanics changed now for Mega Pokemon, Manectric will be able to outpace the Mega Metagross in the next turn, even though, like, at the moment, the regular Manectric is slower. Yeah, I really like their play on uh, Davide's side. He ensured that he will be able to uh, get off that Intimidate into that Metagross now, uh, since he lost his clear body and uh, changed his ability to Tough Claws. So, that is one point. Um, and now we see the Mega Evolution of Manectric. We'll probably see a uh, switch out here. I can see him going for a wall switch and bringing yes. in his Landorus. So firing mm -hmm. off two Intimidates to two yeah. physical attackers. If he did bring that Landorus and then has potentially that Snorlax that you were saying is the key member of this team composition in the back, then that could be a big opportunity for him. Um, ben is trying to call the Protect out here, or like trying to call the Vault switch here. And let's see if uh. Davide called that. No, he decided to go after that Metacross. And it looks like Gothitelle is actually moving before the Tabu Bulu. So I'm interested in seeing what that Tabu Bulu is going for it's actually the wood hammer and Gothitelle being pretty pretty fast here or that type of bullet being super slow designed for trick group either way it is able to pick up a clean KO on that Mega Manectric using a life or boosted wood hammer as it seems yeah so that life or boosted wood hammer was enough through that intimidate to pick up the KO on Manectric which is not known to be super bulky and I think that was a very clever play to prevent that wall switch yeah that protect uh, David I could have decided to go into that Tabubulu, but now he lost his Manectric and brings in that Celestial, which is also another key factor in this game because if you like now you have Metagross and Tabubulu and they both are not able to yep. take care of that Celestial. Yeah, Celestial definitely one of those Pokemon. If you don't have the right Pokemon on the field, you definitely want to switch them in. But with Gothitelle being the partner, it's so difficult. And also Gothitelle really helping out Celestial with a potential heal pulse, um, really um, giving it access to recovery that it so likes because there's not a lot of Pokemon in the format that can do over 50% to a Celesteela, especially if you're able to kind of like choose your battles wisely by um, knowing what is on the field when you have to like you the opportunity to vault switch and switch something in here. And of course, one important part is to keep your Goffy Tail alive, to keep the trap alive. So he's just protecting his Goffy Tail and Ben uh. goes for the double target into that Goffy Tail. So great protect here and we see Lead Seed into that Metagross. Now Celestia starts setting those Lead Seeds up and looking at the HP set of Celestia, this looks like a more offensive mm -hmm. variant because it's not invested too much into HP with a 183 HP set. Um, so we might see a Heavy Slam picking up KOs in Tapu Bulu and probably um, giving him a tech boost with a beast boost. Yeah, that could be a potential um, also I think really like the Misty Seed and Acrobatics combination is something that was seen on these teams before. Now an interesting thing to note is that the Gothitelle actually as it was outspeeding the Tabu Bulu, now I don't think that the Tabu Bulu would be in Psychic K orange anymore after um, getting those two rounds of grassy terrain recovery and um, so that Celesteela could try and target down the Tabu Bulu but if Ben was able to get off another one of those wood hammers um, on the Gothitelle, things could get really dicey here. Actually, it seems like Ben is trying to, to get go for the flinch here. But he's saying not that, getting it. Yeah, if he got this, the Tabu Bulu would be able to get off another round of attacks. And um, yeah, if Metagross just targeted down the Gothitelle, probably wouldn't do too much damage anyway. So yeah, really like trying to get, take his chances here. Now, it is actually the special defense that is being boosted here from that Celesteela though. Yeah, so very interesting play here. Ben plays for his odds. He knows that that one Iron Hat into that Gothitelle won't change anything about the outcome of this turn. But if he gets the flinch on that um, Celestia with the Iron Hat, then he will be able to fire off another Wood Hammer. And that might deal a lot of damage to that Gothitelle. Either broken the potential berry there or picking up the KO. We don't know that yet. Yeah, he um, was intimidated before. Yeah. But still doing... So, so much damage. Now, with picking up KOs, that is another part of that team. If you pick up KOs, 
your opponent is free to switch in whatever he wants. And in comes the uh, Incineroar, which is great against both Pokemon here. Uh, there was no defense uh, boost on that Celestia, so both Flablets and a potential knockoff of Darkest Laureate are really great against both these Pokemon on the field. And if Davide's last Pokemon happens to be that Snorlax, I'll, I'd be a little bit worried for him because this Incineroar seems like an absolute champ there, um, with knockoff removing those important items from Davide's Pokemon and then also threatening, um, of course, the Celestia with Flablets. Of course, Davide doesn't want to have anything of that, just is going to protect both of his Pokemon. Yeah, so we have to see which other tricks this Goffitel has. We saw Protect so far, we saw Psychic. Uh, I expect there to be a Trick Room, yeah. but there's one more move slot. So we have to see what kind of item, uh, move this is. It might be Heal Pulse we talked about. Yes. Uh, it might be an Ally Switch we have seen before on yeah, the there's, street. Yeah, there's certainly so a there couple of options. options. We see Double Protect here. Now he cannot protect uh, truly either, like uh, both of those or like any of those Pokemon. So this Pokemon, like this turn comes down to predictions. What is this? Uh, Incineroar attacking here. We will see a double combination of Iron Hat and Flablets into Celestia, probably picking up the KO. Or is there a double attack in that Goffy Town? Yeah, I don't think that um, uh, Knockoff and Iron Hat might come a little short of um, picking up the KO on that Goffy Town, especially if a Landorus was coming in here. And that is actually what we're seeing here. So another round of Intimidate, and he did have the option to go for that Landorus earlier, but decided to go for the Celestia instead. We were uh, talking about that against the Tapu Bulo and Mega Metagross, but of course we've already seen it in yesterday's streams games. Um, this Mega Metagross is e even after like one round or two rounds of Intimidate is so powerful. And here we do see that combination I was talking about, not quite enough to get the KO here, though um, he was like Ben was able to remove the the berry from Gothita. Now though, David is setting up Trick Room, and um, yeah, that leads to still an effect. But it seems like yeah, that Landorus. Um, I don't know. Is probably the only real hope that Davida still has here to take down that Incineroar, and that is going to be very important for him. Yeah. So we don't know which item this uh, Landorus carries at the moment. We have to see what that turns out to be. Uh, but Landorus being in a great spot, being slower than that Landor uh, that Amerigos now in Trick Room, being able to fire off earthquakes, and those lead seeds set it up so early in the game will now have a huge effect when it comes to that earthquake picking up the KO on that uh, Metagross. Metagross not being able to switch out has to protect. But then again, what is Incineroar doing? to that Landorus. Yeah, so we're probably just going to see like something like a Protect and Earthquake play this turn. Actually, just another double Protect. Now, um, Davide really wants to try and probably fish out Protects from yeah. these Pokemon. And there it is, Metagross protecting. And I would assume that this Incineroar is just going into that Landorus. And that, that is what we're seeing. Because um, Incineroar probably slower than the Landorus. And with two moves, like two Flablets, could be enough to get the knockout there if there is no Heal Pulse or Ally Switch from the Gothitelle to aid its partner. But now though, uh, Metagross just used its Protect, so Lander is kind of free to go for a ground type attack and do a lot of damage this turn. Yeah, and I can see that Gothitelle switching out to bring in that Celestia, which is a flying type, which is immune to the Earthquakes. So a great play here would be just to switch out Goffitel, bring in Celestia, like go for the Earthquake, picking up the KO, Metagross dealing a lot of damage to the Incineroar. We have to see which, I which item that Incineroar carries. Uh, but then on the other side, a potential Flowlets into the Landorus could... Like, I don't want to curse it. Let's, let's just see what happens here. So there is that Celestia coming in, just as you were saying. So we were really expecting this Landorus to go for a powerful Earthquake there. Incineroar is going ahead and will use Flablets, though. Targeted into the Landorus, of course, doing a lot of damage there with a critical hit. But with all that recoil and there wasn't any burns coming out, this Earthquake might actually be enough to get the knockout on Incineroar that Davide was probably not really expecting to get here. Ah! Incineroar just wide. barely hanging in there. And if it was one of those berry variants, I'm not sure if that was revealed on stream yesterday. I don't think we did see the item of Incineroar, but it is not a berry. And Incineroar just barely hanging in there after that Earthquake. Yeah. And now back in comes Tabu Coco, which is not a great answer to that Landorus either. But then once again, we are in Trick Room, that Incineroar is slower. The question is, is Celestia probably slower than yeah. Incineroar being able to pick up the KO on that side? Then Davide would just easily win the game. Yeah, so target the Incineroar I with think this is the key turn in this first turn, uh, first game. Yeah, definitely. It, it'll come down to um, in, to like speed information here between the Incineroar and the Celestia. Though Davide still has one more Pokemon in the back, so he can maneuver around a little bit. Maybe attempt to... Um, like like take out the Incineroar as soon as he can and this play is something I really like because even if that Incineroar went for let's say a Flavit into the Celestia 
um, it would have fainted to the recoil. So um, Davide probably correctly identifying that this is an assault vest Incineroar, going for the protect with his Landorus, ensuring that he can get the KO on Incineroar no matter what happens this turn. And um, Celesteela is able to pick up that KO, and now it's all down to Tapu Koko for Ben. Yeah, so we will probably see that Giga will have it going into that Celestia. We just saw how it boosted its special defense thanks to that beast boost ability. Uh, I don't think though that that Giga will have it will be enough. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, we'll, that, that, we'll have a problem. We'll, yeah, we'll yes. have a chance to KO that Celestia through that uh, boosted special defense, and then it is Goffitel and Landers against that Tabu Coco. I think one important part is here that we are still in Trick Room. We might see heal pots here to ensuring that even outside of Trick Room, that Landers will be able to take a hit from that yes. Tabu Coco and then be able to Earthquake. On the other side though, what is uh, Landorus doing in this turn because he cannot freely go for an Earthquake? Hmm. So this might come down to predictions. So you're saying that if Tapu Coco just went ahead and um, went for the Dazzling Gleam for example, knocking out the Gothitelle even after the Heapod, so then the next turn, another round of Dazzling Gleam, like after Trick Room is over, after he protected the Tapu Coco the following turn, um, Tapu Coco could still be able to take home this game for Ben and um, it's really on Davide and his moveset of course Ben is going for uh, the protect though here so yeah heal pulse here could be game changing yeah, uh, the question is which item does the Landorus carry though, and actually it reveals its item. It is the ground EMZ and is able to fire off the Tectonic Rage into that Tabu Coco, which of course protected, won't take too much damage here, but what did the Goffitel do? Can you help me out with that uh, he went. He went for uh, a Psychic into the Tabu Coco, so okay. it seems like no heal pulse at least for this turn. So um, yeah, the, the Tectonic Rage coming out, even through the Protect, that is going to do a decent chunk of damage. However, if the Tabu Coco makes it like out of Trick Room, then a Dazzling Gleam should be able to grab both KOs here, uh, considering like now it comes back to that critical hit from the Incineroar on the Landorus that we saw earlier. But if that Tapu Coco has access to Dazzling Gleam, it should be able to take on this yeah, game. Yeah, and we see the Dazzling there Gleam it is. coming off. Coming out, and he does get the double knockout, so Ben Markham will win the first game in this series. And Davide now uh, really has to feel a little bit unsatisfied because he was doing so well for uh, most of the game, but then eventually, yeah, that critical hit on the ins with the Incineroar really mm -hmm. changing things up a little bit. Um, also, I think in the early game, Ben made a really nice play there, protecting his Metagross early on to get the mm -hmm. KO and Mega Manectric, and I think that that is um, something that Davide can definitely try and change for the second game. Yeah, uh, losing his Manectric, not being able to fire off Intimidates later in the game, being able to bring it back, uh, deal damage. I think Manectric is not too bad against that um, Tabu Coco because it's not taking too much damage from that Thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. Of course, doesn't give him still a part, but then we have Snarl, a potential Snarl, lowering the, the attack set. I was talking about how heal pulls might be one way to get out of this game here, yes. healing up. Like He actually c could have just went for heal pulls Earthquake, and even if um, Tabu Coco protects and he just uh, knocks out his mm -hmm. own Goffy Tail, he still has a uh, Lander is with over 50 uh, percent yes, and that should, should, that should be able to take to a take dozen game and then fire off a strong single target earthquake which we don't see too often because it's not a 1 we one and doubles too often. Um, so that should be enough to take up the KO there. Um, unfortunately we either there was no heal pulse or mm -hmm. he didn't want to go for it in that yes. first game so we have to see what the last move on that Goffy Tail is. Uh, interesting though he didn't bring the Snorlax in the first game. He was probably fearing that in Cineroar that knock off. But yep. if you're able to catch two other Pokemon, uh, like other than the Incineroar, and then bring in your Snorlax, you're in a really great position. So the question is, does he still rely on that in, uh, Celestia to put yeah. pressure on that second game? Because Celestia is not great against that uh, Incineroar either. Yeah, Celestia wasn't doing all too much. It did come in a nice position against the Tabu Bula and the Mega Metagross. But I, I do think that Davide might want to switch things up a little bit. Might want to go with that Snorlax mode. I like the main Actric and Gothitelle lead. And then maybe, as we were saying, um, the Landorus, Therian and the Snorlax in the back could be something for Davide to look into. But of course, um, Ben might also now predict things because it's just like a common theme in a best of three scenario where, hey, if you're losing a game, maybe you're changing something. And at the same time, if you want a game, maybe you're like going for the same strategy here. So Davide is going with the same lead combination. It is going to be that main act trick and the Gothitelle, and the same for Ben. So so far, at least, neither of these players wanted to um, yeah change anything from their first game. Yeah. So we have to see. Um, 
This side I think is safer players to double track once again. Maybe not make a walk the medicals on the other side though. And then I think the ward switch into that Terror Bull is a little bit safer because if Terror Bull decides to protect, then Mega uh, Metagross won't be able to pick up the KO on that Manectric. Uh, maybe maybe it with, with Stomping Tantrum, um, after not being intimidated, I yeah, think that, that might actually be one hard, could so be enough. It would still come down to which Pokemon do you want to attack into a ward switch. Well, this, uh, this turn though, we see that he's straight going for that Mega Evolution. Uh, he won't be able to intimidate the Metagross, but maybe he wants to just catch off a wall switch early in the game this time. Yeah, maybe he wants to um, just try and go for the wall switch early on and um, potentially have that Landorus come in. But yeah, as you were saying, no protect, also no Mega Evolution coming out from that Mega Metagross, but instead we're seeing an overheat coming into that Tapu Bulu. Not enough to take the KO though. Yeah, so the Iron Head going into that squad. <coughs> And the board armor falling And up. the double up into the yeah. Gothitelle Should is enough for the KO Should there. Enough, right, and now there's no Gothitelle on the field anymore, no control from David's side, and I think this was huge for Bantam. Yeah, um, at the same time, in uh, the, the Tabu Bulu fainting from recoil damage, so now we are at a 3 versus 3 scenario, but David losing his Gothitelle, that is so important um, for. So important, really, for that trapping ability there. And now he's kind of stuck with a Manectric at a reduced special attack stat, facing down an Incinero that can really threaten his solo stealer, and then also that um, Metagross that is soon to be a Mega. So I think that Ben is in a pretty solid position so far, really um, focusing down on that Gothitelle, making the correct play there. And it seems like um, Davide is the one who will need to try and um, find a way to now reset his position yeah, you were talking about how we are feel free in Pokemon now. We see the Mega Evolution this time. Um, so no Intimidate into the Meta Metagross, but M Mega <coughs> Metagross here at this point against um, that uh, Manectric and Celesta is not doing too much. So we see a double protect here. He probably wants to see uh, what Ban is deciding to go for, so he can adapt in the next turn. But of course, uh, Ban and the next one can totally just change up his plans and that, that double protect doesn't gain him too much here. Yeah, it seems like the video is really liking those double protects. Um, already seen a couple of him um, here and there. And now, of course, um, sometimes it just helps like stall out a turn so that there's no fake out coming your way. And it um, seems like he doesn't want to play the guessing game of where is the fake out going to land here. Instead, now he will withdraw his Celesteela, switch in the Landorus, get off and intimidate on that Mega Metagross finally. And if he wants to, he could go for a Vault Switch now, repositioning the Mega Manectric and also uh, making it so that he can go for another round of intimidate in the following turn. Yeah, actually, thinking about that last turn, it totally made sense because he double protected to let that Mega Metagross, to let that Metagross Mega yes. Evolve. So in the next turn, he can switch in his Landorus. So thinking about that, it totally makes sense. Uh, uh, now we're seeing a, a wall switch into Celestia here on that side. We see Ice Punch coming off though. Ah, so that's like one of those options you have with a team that has so many like switching options with that um, uh, with that wall switch on the Mega Man Electric. However, Ben really like doubling up there with an Ice Punch and Flabbers combination. So no matter which Pokemon the Manectric wanted to switch into, um, Ben was getting off a lot of damage either way. Celesteela, on the other hand, though, able to hang in there even after that Flablitz. Yeah, I really like Ben's um, uh, field situation here. You said he just covered both options, which was totally right. If that Lennon decided to switch out and then coming back with Wall Switch, he would just uh, catch it with that Ice Punch, Flabbitz combination with the Celesteela. It doesn't take... Um, but this combination too uh, well either. So yeah, Celeste is down to 25 HP. Uh, it doesn't have a berry, which looks like. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not healing any damage back. And that Celeste uh, looks like not doing too much for this game anymore. So we can, might see a potential Ice Punch in the Landorus and the Fire move into that Celestia. And I don't really see how Davide is taking this game back. Yeah, Davide really needs to make a decision now. He could uh, withdraw the Celestia, go into May May main trick, intimidate the Metagross uh, for another round and then hope that his Landorus can take the Ice Punch. Fire back with um, his Tectonic Rage. Of course, now we're also in uh, grassy terrain and it seems like Davide did not bring his own type of Finny, so he can't, cannot reset the terrain. We are going to see that Ice Punch and now will the Landorus be able to take it, it can um, survive this move, and now there is that Tectonic Rage coming out from Davidus Landorus. Um, yeah, either way, one Pokemon of Ben is going down, and if it is targeted into that um, Incinero, then Ben won't be able to really like do anything this turn anymore. But if it is the Metagross that is being targeted, Incinero could get off like another Flabbits. But yeah, taking out the Incinero now means that um, Davide does have his Mega Manectric on the field to deal with the uh, Mega Metagross on his opponent's side, and it's really coming down to which 
uh, is the last Pokemon of Ben's side. We, he hasn't revealed it yet. Um, it could be that Tapu Koko once again. But after what happened in the last game, yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised. But instead, it's going to be it's the Araqua need. It's the totem version, and uh, which I thought was a good game for Ban, turns out to be an open game here. And uh, now Ban is down to his last two Pokemon, and that Metagross is intimidated twice already. So it's not yes. dealing too much damage at this point. And then Munectric, such a great Pokemon against Araqua need. Um, so yeah, of course another Ice Punch will pick up the K1 Landorus, but um, how is he dealing with that Man uh, Manectric here? Yeah, at the same time though, um, something you do when you choose Mega Manectric to be your Mega of choice, you're really trading like a lot of uh, power for all the versatility. So with Volt Switch uh, not being as powerful as Thunderbolt and Mega Manectric not having like an ability to boost its stats, it's really... Um, like not as powerful as some of the other mega Pokemon we have. So now if Davide um, was to call some of the moves incorrectly, there still could be something in there for Ben, but nice Volt Switch into the Iraq when it doing over 50% of its health. Of course, it might be able to recover just a little bit more with that grassy terrain, but calling um, the move correctly here. However, both his Celesteela and the Landorus are very low on HP. So yeah, his Mega Man actually will really have to carry for Davide here. Yeah, and the question is... Um which last move does the Celestia carry? We just see the Z move coming up from that Iraq one. The question is, is it going into that protect from Landorus? I think at this point, yeah, either it way, it's be like enough. a KO. Yeah. Yeah. It should pick up the KO through that protect or just pick up the KO on that. Celestia, it's a great switch there. He's losing a Celestia, but of course, he's bringing back that Monectric, setting up another Intimidated to Metagross and an Iraq one. And then we have to see if a second wall switch is enough. I think he can just go for the protect and just recover a little bit more health if that aggressive turn should not be over, which actually happens to be here. The okay, case so uh, aggressive turn over, no recovery anymore for that rock on it. If he's able to take that second um, wall switch, then I can see how this game actually goes to ban. Yeah, at the same time though, his Mega Metagross, while it has been intimidated three times now, I believe, um, is still sitting there at full HP and it's very difficult for a Manectric to take it out. Um, it could go for a combination of like first a Volt Switch and then an Overheat or something like that, but Ben's Mega Metagross will make it through this turn most likely um, if it is able to take a potential Overheat, but then uh, that would leave the Mega Manectric at a reduced special attack set, uh, leaving the Iraq when it able to take a couple of those Volt Switches potentially. So I think that um, we're going to get down to um, to one Pokemon for Davide, he tries to go for that Snarl, wanted to bring the Mega Metagross into KO range for um, the for Overheat and the bring the Araquanid into KO range for Volt Switch, at least that's what I would assume, but Snarl unfortunately missing that Mega Metagross, which then went on to take the KO on the Landorus and now, yeah, that Mega Man actually really proving to not be as powerful as some of the other Mega Pokemon and taking so much damage from that Iraq when it's liquidation. Yeah, very interesting option to go for the Snarl that you said how he's setting up the later KOs with that overheat and that um, wall switch. But the question is, first of all, uh, does he survive two attacks here? I think the stomping Tedro might be enough at this point to pick up the KO and then another liquidation might also yes. be enough. So unfortunately, uh, although he intimidated his opponent, he will not be able to take two hits and this game might actually go to Ben here because uh, yeah, he might go for that overheat even with a crit might just pick up the KO. Uh, we just see a wall switch actually. So the question is, will he be able to take one hit from that Mega uh, Metagross? Yeah, so now uh, that is what it might come down to depending on how much damage overheat can do in return. Something Tantrum is coming out on that Mega Manectric and it does survive! So if There's that's not connected, then Overheat probably would have been enough to take the knockout here, but now I'm not sure if Mega Man Electric has what it takes to get the KO. Of course, the video is going for it anyway. The Overheat is coming out, targeted down the Mega Metagross. Will it be enough? It is not! And Mega Metagross should be able to clean up this game, taking the KO there for Ben. And Davide, unfortunately for him, is eliminated from the tournament. And Ben Markham is moving on to finals. Yeah, congratulations to Ben. Really great games here. And actually, we see a full British final here in Malmö at the regionals. We have Ben in finals already. We will see who out of Baz and Boyd will advance. But it will be full British finals in Malmö here. Um, sorry for Davide for being eliminated at this point. Really nice performance. Coming yes. back to Malmö after having his uh, breakout in um, London at the International, just proving himself that even at the regional stage he can do well. And I think with this CP and the money he wins here, he's in a really great spot. Um, 
to participate at the World Championship. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, I definitely think that he should be qualified there. Um, we might have to ask Ben if he is already qualified for the Pokemon World Championships because he's, I think, the like in these top four with all those like three other veteran players or like. In Davida's case, someone who has had a lot of great achievements in the past. Ben is someone who's like really um, the odd one out there, but now yeah. making it into the finals, overcoming the odds there. Um, yeah, looking forward to hearing from him in a short interview. And then we'll be right back with the second top four game. It's going to be Jamie Boyd against Bass Anderson. I can't wait for that. So don't go anywhere.
Hello Pokemon trainers and welcome back. We just witnessed a really great top 4 game and now we are, we are seeing Ban Markham. Uh, you just not made it to your first top cut, but you actually managed to go straight through to the finals. How do you feel first of all? I mean, I feel amazing obviously because I've played in so many regionals and I've never never made it to the top cut. So, just really happy to have made it this far. Yeah, so congratulations for that. I mean, amazing performance today so far. You will face one of those two gentlemen behind us afterwards with Baz and Boyd. Um, talking about your team. So, with this new meta game, one question I have for you is how did you approach team building when it comes to having potential Z moves, uh, potential mega Pokemon? So, what was like your approach to come with your team? Uh, I mean, this team was originally. Uh, a Mega Camerot Tapabulu Trick Room team. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, but I still wanted the fast modes with Tapu Koko and Metagross, which mm -hmm. are quite a strong combination together. Because if it's against Chawai and non scaf Landorus, they can easily KO both and outspeed. Um, I made the switch from Camerot to Incineroar, and then uh, Araquanid um, on the. Uh, Scrafty, which was okay. on the we previous We haven't seen team. too much of your trick room mode so far. You tend to opt for the Meridus fast mode and then having Incineroar. <laughs> I think uh, we never saw the actual confirmation, but it looked like your Incineroar was really bulky. Looking, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we don't want to really too much going into finals here, uh, but I think Incineroar, great option here with Flablets. You show knockoff, knockoff. How do you feel about knockoff in this metagame? Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing utility move, both for scouting items and just uh, there's so many berries in the format that it's just so useful to have. And I think Incineroar, even without its hidden ability Intimidate, it's just such an amazing Pokemon. Yeah, let's just talk a little bit about your last game. So, uh, I think the archetype of your opponent's team was known prior to this tournament. You probably faced it when uh, practicing for this tournament. How did you feel about playing Goffitel back to back to back in the last rounds? <laughs> um, I mean, it's... It, it can be awkward um, not being able to switch out, like get a uh, grassy terrain or a Raconid in um, when I need them. But um, Incineroar feels pretty strong against those teams. Yes. Like, I think Unintimidated, it has a decent shot at one shot in Gothitelle when it's still got its berry. Um, yeah, just thinking about that first game, when you protected your uh, Metagross and being able to pick up the KO on, uh, on that Manectric, how did that feel? Like, I mean, that was a great play. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I thought he might. He was probably going to Volt Switch something out because he wasn't... Well, he could fire off an Overheat, but then he was losing a lot of momentum and I don't think he was necessarily KOing either Pokemon. Um, yeah, just made the reads. And then in the second game, towards the end, we saw how Snarl missed the meta Metag was. I think uh, some might think that that was crucial to the outcome of the game. Yeah. But just let's think this through. So uh, we saw that if that Snarl connected, um, the next turn he would still have to decide which Pokemon to attack. Yeah, exactly. And then if he goes for that Mega Metagross with that Overheat, and then he loses special attack and won't be able to pick up the KO on that Araquanid. Then yeah. if you call that Protect, more so if you just go for that Protect on Araquanid, attack with Metagross, uh, risk losing it, but you would still have your Araquanid being able to take out the Manectric with a second hit. So what were your thoughts into that last few turns? Um, is this if the Snell hit or the Snell missed? Yeah. Uh, which? Sorry. So it, it missed. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I, f I had a feeling that Metagross should live an overheat um, like from full. Well, it was basically full. It lost like 1 HP. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did consider protecting Araquanid just because he was probably going to go for that first, but um, I didn't want to overextend. And then if he goes for the Metagross and it KOs, and then I just lose. Yeah. So. Okay, so once again, congratulations to your performance so far. You still have to be one of those gentlemen behind us. Uh, <laughs> we'll see who is advancing to finals out of them. But it's also very nice to see that you're traveling together here, three British friends all yeah. making it to four, and now two of you <laughs> are in top finals. Yeah, this I is mean, really great. <laughs> we're all staying in the same hostel as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, great, great job on Team UK at this tournament so far. Congratulations to you once again. Thank you. And see you back in finals. Thanks.